hopefully I've left enough room over here on the side to insert the charts and stuff because it is time for my 2018 reading statistics. This is one of my favorite videos to do every year. It is also one of the most labor intensive, but I think I'm getting an earlier start on it now than I did last year. So let's do this thing. As usual, I'm going to give you a number of statistics in different areas of interest to me every year, and I'm also going to compare these numbers to um, things from the previous year, so comparing 2018 to 2017, because I think that gives a bit more context and you can see more what the numbers mean when you can see how they've changed a bit. And sometimes interesting things pop up, like this year, where it becomes very obvious that all the rereading I did really affected a bunch of categories. In 2018, I read 295 works. That is 190 books, 57 comics, 32 novellas, and 16 magazine issues. Weirdly, I continued to count both comics and novellas as genres in addition to formats. I thought I'd fix that. Maybe I'll fix that in 2019, but it's a little too late to go back now. <laughs> How does that compare to 2017, though? So in 2018, I read 190 books versus 198 in 2017, so not that big of a change there. Uh, 57 comics, which is twice as much as I read in 2017, that number was 26. 32 novellas, which is up slightly from 22 in 2017, and uh, 16 magazine issues was a drop from the 28 I read in 2017. I have definitely been steadily reading less and less short fiction over the last two or three years. I'm trying to reverse that trend. So really, my book number has stayed pretty much the same over a number of years. It's gone down ever so slightly as I've added in other things. So I'm kind of reading the same number of books, but throwing in a lot of things that I didn't used to read so much of, like comics and novellas. For the remainder of these statistics, I am dropping the magazine data, which means all the numbers after this point in the video will be for the 279 books, comics, and novellas that I read. The first category is genre. The 279 works I read came from 19 genres, and that is one genre more than I read in 2017. So I'm still keeping a good mix in there, though when you dig into this, things really changed. So from my most read genre, Genre to my least read. I read 57 comics, and this category includes trade comics, graphic novels, and manga. I read 47 science fiction novels, 33 fantasy novels, 32 novellas, 26 nonfiction books, 17 collections, 17 middle grade books, 17 young adult books, 6 literary fiction books, 6 mysteries, 5 mainstream or contemporary novels, three poetry collections, two each in biography, drama, and steampunk, and one each in classics, humor, and romance. The one thing I am unhappy with here is my science fiction reading. I had no idea until I got to the end of the year that I was reading so little science fiction compared to the previous year, because 47 sci-fi novels is a big drop from the 76 I read in 2017. On the flip side, I did greatly increase my reading of comics, middle grade, novellas, and young adult. And that's probably because a lot of what I was reading was, well, rereads of childhood favorites, which tended to be middle grade and young adult. And then, yeah, once again, I reread Fruits Basket, so that's why the comics number is so big. I also read more collections this year than I thought I had. Um, I read 17 collections in 2018 versus the seven that I read in 2017, but I did read the same number of anthologies as the previous year, which was only four. And interestingly, there are two genres that didn't even appear this year, and those were historical fiction and memoirs, which I had been pretty consistent in reading at least a few of those every year in the past three or four years, but I didn't read any of them in 2018 for some reason. Now for sources, which is where I get the books that I read. 143 of the books I read were ones that I owned. 119 came from library sources. So if you drill down into the library category, 57 books were physical books that I got from local library branches. 51 were from Overdrive. Four were from RB Digital, which is another online digital library resource. And seven came from Interlibrary Loan. I read 12 books that came from publishers, two from Audible, 
two that I borrowed from other people and one that came from NetGalley. So compared to the previous year, I came close to doubling the number of books I read that I owned, which is great. I read 143 books that I owned versus 89 in 2017. And that is totally what I was aiming for. I was really focused on getting things off of my physical TBR in 2018. I didn't get as much traction on that little mini project as I thought I was going to, which is why it's a much bigger deal for me in 2019. But I'm glad to see that it's reflected in my statistics in some way. Now that I'm looking at this, it looks like my library usage stayed pretty much the same with the exception that within that category, my local library and ILL usage went down, but my overdrive usage increased possibly because I got access to a third library system which um, is too far away from me to go to like one of their branches but I'm using their overdrive collection and yeah that's been very helpful. <laughs> I also compare um, just like the lump sum of paid sources versus free sources every year so 145 works came from paid sources and 134 came from free sources and in 2017, that was 94 and 152. So I definitely kind of flip-flopped on that more. I was reading more from paid sources than I had before, not quite double, but close to it. And once again, I'm very happy with that. Now time for formats, which is the quickest category. I have very little to say about this year to year because of the numbers don't change that much year to year. I read 100 books that were paperbacks, 57 graphic, 41 hardcover, 41 audiobooks, 39 ebooks, and one other. So I increased reading paperbacks, I increased reading graphic type works because I read so many more comics, my hardcover reading was down, uh, my audiobook usage almost doubled, and my ebooks were roughly the same, and the one other was an arc that I read. So yeah, trade paperbacks are always my favorite format. Um, I'm a little surprised that my ebook usage didn't increase that much, but um, actually I was probably reading or listening to more audiobooks from Overdrive and stuff rather than ebooks, uh, which explains that. Now for the fun stuff, author and gender data. In 2018, I read 279 works by 165 unique authors, and of those authors, 77 were new to me in 2018, meaning I read a significant work by them for the first time. So like in 2017, I read works by 186 unique authors, which is about 20 more than I did in 2018, and 101 of those were new to me in 2017. So that's a pretty significant drop down to only 77. Once again, I attribute this to all the rereading I did. Uh, of course, reread authors are not new to me. And I was also focusing on reading a lot of books that I own, and I'm more likely to own books by authors that I've read before in the past. Now for gender. As usual, I break down gender in two ways. I do gender by author and gender by books because these two ways can tell very different stories sometimes, and I prefer to have kind of gender parity in each of the different ways of calculating it. So first, gender by author. Of the 165 authors that I read works by, 82 were women, 69 were men, three were non-binary folks, and 11 were both or unknown. So compared to the previous year, I read fewer books by both men and women, but that has more to do with volume um, than with a changing ratio. So in 2017, I read 102 female authors and 76 male authors. 2018 was the first time that I started tracking non-binary authors, so I don't have anything to compare that number to this year, but I hope to see it increase a bit in 2019. And like last year, I was curious about the gender breakdown specifically for the new to me authors in 2018. So of the 77 authors that were new to me, 38 were women, 34 were men, two were non-binary, and three were both or unknown. So compared to last year, I definitely had more parity in author gender here because in 2017, 58 of the new to me authors were women and 40 were men. So I closed that gap between men and women a little bit in 2018 with the new authors that I was discovering. Now for gender by books. 
Of the 279 works I read, 161 were by women, 101 were by men, 4 were by non-binary folks, and 13 were by mixed teams of people or unknown. I have a much bigger gap between books by women and books by men here over last year. In 2017, 132 of the books I read were by women and 105 were by men. So what I did in 2018 was read far, far more titles by women than men, but I stayed pretty consistent with the volume I was reading by men. Once again, my rereads probably affected this somewhat, um, but I am pretty bothered by it, actually. I wasn't paying attention to ratios like this for much of the year, otherwise I would have course corrected and like read some of the books by men that I have sitting on my shelves because I have plenty of them. But for some reason, I kept thinking I wasn't reading enough by women, which tells you that sometimes your gut feeling is really, really wrong from reality. The next question is how does gender compare in specific genres that I am paying attention to gender parity in? So 2016 was the first year that I looked at the gender split in different genres, and I was really paying attention to it in 2017 and did a good job at achieving pretty much equality between male and female authors. Um, but of course in 2018 I forgot to check these ratios at all and it got weird. <laughs> Last year I only looked at this breakdown in science fiction and nonfiction, but this year I'm going to do both of those genres plus fantasy because I expect I will be paying more attention to the fantasy genre and the breakdowns within it in the future if I attempt things like a project to read all the World Fantasy Award winners and things like that. So in 2018, in science fiction, I read 16 works by women and 30 by men, which kind of sucks because back in 2017, I had a perfect 38 women, 38 men split in this genre. So I don't know, guys. Um, in nonfiction, I read 15 works by women and seven by men. I didn't read as much nonfiction as I did in the previous year, but I did lean way more in the direction of women because it was an almost even split between genders in 2017. And as for fantasy, in 2018 I read 21 works by women and 10 by men. In 2017 I read 19 fantasy works by women and 8 by men. So this has been pretty consistent for years in that I usually read more fantasy by women than men and we will see if that does change in the future with any of the reading projects I have in mind. Now for publication year, the two oldest works that I read were two plays by William Shakespeare. They were Henry IV parts 1 and 2 which were published in the 1590s. My average publication year was 2003, the highest that number has ever been, and my median publication year was 2015. I do expect my average publication year to slowly creep up over time, but that was a pretty big jump from 1993 in 2017 to 2003 in 2018. I read 63 books that were published in 2018 and a total of 177 books that were published in the 2010s. This is all pretty normal for me, but you can tell I was reading fewer older books this year. And lastly, a quick check-in on the two newest categories in my statistics, uh, translated works and non-American authors. 17% of the works I read in 2018 were translated. This was a great increase from 11% in 2017. That 17% is 47 works, of which 10 were by men, 36 were by women, and one was by both. So you can tell I was reading a lot by Natsuki Takiya and Tove Janssen. However, the number of books by non-American authors that I read decreased more than I wanted it to. In 2017, about 46% of the books that I had read were by non-American authors, but that dropped down to 42% in 2018. And that's because I just wasn't paying close enough attention. Those are my reading statistics for 2018. Honestly, I don't have much commentary on the numbers this year. I think the one thing that stands out to me is that I didn't read as much science fiction as I thought I was going to or that I thought I had. I was just really wrong in my feelings on whether I'd read that much science fiction this year. And that disappoints me mainly because science fiction is my thing here. Um, but I also think I have to admit that every year is different. 
every year has its own thing. And in 2018, for me, that was rereading books. And that really affected the numbers, especially because when I reread, I am coming back to works from my childhood and my teenage years, which tend to be middle grade, tend to be young adult, tend to be fantasy. And rather than rereading science fiction works that I love, but which I started reading when I was an adult rather than when I was a child. Um, so otherwise, um, I'm actually more surprised that there weren't surprises in my statistics this year because I uh, really wasn't paying attention to the numbers like I usually do throughout the course of the year. So I got to the end and was like, well, let's see what I actually did because I don't remember. I wasn't checking in on it. And honestly, there wasn't that much super different that was noteworthy. So yeah, overall, I'm okay with it and I will be reading more science fiction in 2019. That is it for me in this video. Do let me know if you have any thoughts on my statistics this year. Did you keep your own statistics and were you surprised by anything? Let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back to talk to you again soon. And until then, bye.